Back to the NBA, we need the Lakers capologist to address our nation's national deficit. Tuesday, the Lakers added Melo to the fold. It's a one-year deal, got to be team-friendly, given their flurry of other moves. None, Monk, Horton, Tucker. Anthony averaged 13 and a half in 24 minutes last season, became the 10th all-time leading scorer in NBA history as well. Once all of these moves become official, the Lakers will have 13 players on their roster, eight of whom are age 32 or older. That puts L.A. on track to have one of the oldest teams in NBA history. Only four teams have had an average age of 32 or older. The Lakers, of course, will hope to follow in the footsteps of the 98 Bulls, who won it all. But between LeBron and Melo and Dwight, and Russ, that's four of the top 60 scorers in NBA history. Bobby Marks joins us now. So a lot of us are wondering, there's a salary cap here, <laughs> right? I mean, how are they pulling this off? Explain the money. Yeah, when we entered free agency, the Lakers had about $130 million, which was $18 million over the $112 million salary cap. So their options were really limited. We called it bargain shopping here. And what they were able to do was they had three different options. Kalen Horton Tucker, they signed him today to the early bird exception. They're allowed to exceed the salary cap to do so. He was on the roster for two years. And then you look at a player like Kendrick Nunn, who was in Miami. That is the taxpayer mid-level exception. So he got most of that. And then here's all your, here's all your bargains. Kent Bazemore, Trevor Reza, Dwight, Carmelo, Malik Monk, Wayne Ellington all took the veteran minimum exception. And I like what they did today with uh, Malik Monk. Um, You're able to get Kendrick Nunn. You got a little bit younger. You got some shooting to put around the big three here. And they still have three roster spots. But the most important thing, $34 million luxury tax penalty, the biggest ever in Laker franchise history. So there's a cost associated to this uh, roster. They'll be writing a lot of checks there. And by the way, uh, uh, earlier in the day today, it was the big fella, Marcus All saying, in fact, he would be coming back to the Lakers next season. We've talked a lot about first dominoes falling, right? We've seen quite a few dominoes fall so far, Bobby. Who's left? Yeah, so I call them the cap space free agents. That's what their label was before a free agency started. Those aren't the players who are going to sign for the taxpayer mid-level or even the full mid-level. That's the players like Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, Larry Markinen. Uh, Reggie Jackson, Dennis Schroeder, who was with the Lakers there. And the problem right now is that the market's frozen. There's only about three teams that have cap space. You're looking at a team like Charlotte. New York's got a little bit. San Antonio, Oklahoma City. So a player like Dinwiddie trying to arrange a sign-in trade to get to Washington. It's complicated because the Nets want compensation back. Right. We saw in the DeMar DeRozan sign-in trade. They got a uh, first-round pick, two seconds. Devontae Graham to New Orleans. Um, Charlotte got a first-round pick. So you got to have some, you know, you've got to work with the team here. Uh, Schroeder is the most interesting one for me. Turned down four years, $84 million, and is now looking for a new home. Gambled on himself. We've seen a lot of money changing hands. Lakers, Heat, Heat, Bulls, very active. Bobby Marks, very active. Great (laughs) stuff tonight, Bobby. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.